Have you ever wondered which flu variants have caused the most deaths in the world? In our daily lives, the common flu is often brushed off as nothing more than a seasonal inconvenience. But when a new variant emerges, it has the potential to trigger a global health crisis. From well-known strains like H1N1 to the lesser-known H7N9, these variants have left their mark on human history in dire ways. So buckle up as we embark on a journey through the top 5 deadliest flu variants. Stay tuned as we count down the top 5 deadliest flu variants. Kicking off our countdown at number 5, we have the H1N1 variant from 2009. This flu strain, more commonly known as the swine flu, made headlines across the globe causing widespread panic and fear. The H1N1 virus was first identified in April 2009 in Mexico. From there, it quickly spread to countries across the world, reaching pandemic status by June of the same year. This was the first pandemic flu in more than 40 years, and it took the world by surprise. The virus was so virulent because it was a new strain. This meant that very few people had any immunity to it, and it could spread rapidly among populations. The H1N1 virus was particularly unusual because, unlike most strains of flu which disproportionately affect the very young and the very old, this one seemed to target young, healthy adults. The global impact of the H1N1 virus was significant. It's estimated that between 150,000 to 575,000 people died from the virus in the first year alone. This figure doesn't take into account those who may have died from secondary complications related to the flu. The world's response to the H1N1 pandemic was swift. Health organizations across the globe worked tirelessly to develop a vaccine which was rolled out later in the year. This, combined with public health measures like hand washing and staying home when sick, helped to slow the spread of the virus. However, the H1N1 pandemic served as a stark reminder of the threat posed by influenza viruses. It highlighted the importance of global surveillance for new flu strains and the need for rapid response when a new strain emerges. That's the H1N1 2009 variant, our fifth deadliest flu. It's sobering to think about the impact of this virus and a stark reminder of why it's so important to stay informed and take precautions during flu season. As we delve deeper into our countdown, we'll explore even more deadly strains that have impacted our world. Moving on to number 4, we have the H2N2 variant from 1957. This flu virus, also known as the Asian flu, was first identified in East Asia in February 1957. It didn't take long for the virus to spread, reaching the shores of the United States by summer, and within the year it had become a global pandemic. The H2N2 variant was a new strain of influenza A virus, a product of a genetic shift between avian and human flu viruses. This meant that the majority of people had little to no immunity against it, making this variant particularly virulent. The rapid spread of the virus can be attributed to increased travel and trade in the post-World War II era, but the severity of the illness was exacerbated by a lack of effective vaccines and antiviral drugs. The global healthcare community was caught off guard and struggled to cope with the sudden and widespread outbreak. The H2N2 1957 variant took a substantial toll on human life. It's estimated that between 1 and 2 million people died from this strain worldwide, with the elderly, young children, and pregnant women being particularly vulnerable. The death toll was highest in countries with limited healthcare resources, demonstrating the global inequality in healthcare access and disease prevention. The aftermath of the H2N2 outbreak led to significant developments in global health policy and practice. It highlighted the need for improved surveillance of influenza and other infectious diseases, and it spurred the development of more effective vaccines and antiviral drugs. The World Health Organization also established a global influenza surveillance network in response to the pandemic, which continues to play a vital role in monitoring and responding to flu outbreaks today. The H2 N2 1957 variant serves as a stark reminder of the devastating potential of flu viruses, especially when they emerge in a form to which the global population has little immunity. It underscores the importance of vigilance, preparedness, and global cooperation in the face of such threats. The H2 N2 1957 variant takes our fourth spot. At number three, we find the H3 N2 variant from 1968. Known as the Hong Kong flu, this strain didn't take long to make its mark on the global stage. 
Originating in the bustling city of Hong Kong, it spread rapidly, fueled by the interconnectedness of our modern world. The H3N2 variant was a new subtype of influenza A virus that emerged that year. It was the result of an antigenic shift, a process where two or more different strains of a virus combined to form a new subtype. This phenomenon made the virus particularly potent as the human immune system had no prior exposure or antibodies to combat this new threat. As the virus swept across continents, it left a trail of devastation in its wake. It's estimated that around 1 million people lost their lives to the H3N2 variant globally. This was a grim reminder of the destructive potential of influenza viruses when they mutate and evolve into new forms. The global response to the H3N2 outbreak was a test of the world's pandemic preparedness. Health authorities worldwide worked tirelessly to monitor the spread of the virus, implement containment measures, and develop a vaccine. Despite the challenges, a vaccine was produced within months of the virus's emergence, a testament to the scientific community's ability to respond in the face of adversity. The long-term effects of the H3N2 1968 variant were profound. It underscored the importance of global health surveillance and the need for rapid vaccine development in the face of new viral threats. Furthermore, it served as a stark reminder of the importance of personal hygiene and public health measures in preventing the spread of infectious diseases. While the H3N2 variant of 1968 has since faded into history, its impact remains a powerful lesson for us all. It is a reminder of the relentless nature of influenza viruses, their capacity for change, and the global community's ability to respond to such threats. That's the H3N2 1968 variant, our third deadliest flu. At number two, we have the H1N1 variant from 1918, also known as the Spanish flu. The Spanish flu was a deadly influenza pandemic that swept across the globe in the final year of the First World War. Despite its name, the Spanish flu did not originate in Spain. The misnomer arose because Spain, a neutral country during the war, did not censor its press like the warring nations did, and so reported freely on the disease's progression. In terms of origin, there is no clear consensus among scientists, with hypotheses suggesting that it could have emerged from a military camp in Kansas, United States, or from China. Regardless of its origin, the Spanish flu spread rapidly, facilitated by the close quarters and massive troop movements of World War I. The scale of the Spanish flu pandemic was nothing short of catastrophic. It infected an estimated one-third of the world's population which was around 1.9 billion people at the time. The death toll is estimated to have been between 20 to 50 million, with some estimates going as high as 100 million. This staggering number surpasses the total number of casualties from the war itself. The global response to the pandemic was challenged by the ongoing war. Many countries were ill-prepared to deal with a health crisis of this magnitude, lacking the necessary medical infrastructure and knowledge. It was a harsh lesson in the importance of global health preparedness and cooperation and led to the establishment of many public health organizations and policies. Significant consequences of the Spanish flu include a dramatic reduction in life expectancy, widespread societal disruption, and economic hardships. The pandemic also marked a turning point in public health, introducing new practices such as the use of masks, quarantines, and good personal hygiene. The H1N1 1918 variant, the second deadliest flu in our countdown. And finally, our number one deadliest flu variant is the H7N9 from 2013. Originating in China, this variant was a strain of bird flu that made the jump to humans, causing severe respiratory illness. It was stealthy and unpredictable, spreading rapidly amongst poultry and wild birds, and occasionally infecting humans who came into close contact with these birds. The World Health Organization reported that over a thousand people were affected globally, with a mortality rate of approximately 40%. This led to a significant global response with widespread culling of poultry populations and the development of new vaccines. The long-term effects of the H7N9 outbreak included heightened global vigilance for new flu strains and a renewed emphasis on pandemic preparedness. These measures have remained crucial in the face of potential future health crises. The H7N9 2013 variant, the deadliest flu in our countdown. And there you have it, the top five deadliest flu variants that have caused the most deaths in the world. From H1N1 in 2009 to the H7N9 in 2013, 
Each outbreak underscores the importance of awareness and consistent preventive measures. Remember, knowledge is our best defense. If you found this video informative, please subscribe, follow, like, comment, and share. Your support helps us bring more intriguing countdowns to you. Stay tuned for more and remember, health is wealth.